Hello, in this video we are going to look at another non-ideality of operational amplifiers known as the slew rate and the slew rate limiting frequency as well as the full power bandwidth and we are going to use those principles not only to look at these non-idealities but also to illustrate more functionality of LTSPIs on the Mac version. So I have still the same circuit that we were using in previous videos. It's just a simple non, a simple inverting amplifier. I have a transient analysis. So if we run a sine wave at one kilohertz with an amplitude of one volt, this is an inverting amplifier. So the gain is minus RF over RI. We have a 10K and a one kilo ohm. So the gain is minus 10. We should see at the output for a one volt sinusoidal input at 10 volts inverted output. So let's run the transient analysis for 10 milliseconds. We have done the analysis. We can use the probes to plot the input. As expected, one volt and the output we expect minus 10 volts or 10 volts inverted. There you go. Okay. So we saw already before that as we increase the frequency, we get an attenuation, and that, that attenuation is due to the finite bandwidth. And that finite bandwidth of operational amplifiers is actually a linear phenomenon. The, for a sinusoidal input, you still get a sinusoidal output. But as you increase the frequency, you also have another limitation, which is due to the slew rate, and this is a nonlinear effect. It creates a nonlinear distortion. And we can see it here, although we are confounding both of them, there's a better task that we can design. By increasing this frequency, what we will see is that the output starts becoming more like a triangle wave as opposed to a sinusoidal. Before doing that, I'm going to show how you can... I want to make sure that the input and the output match each other so we can see that distortion. And so I'm going to pick at the input, right-click, and multiply the input times the ideal amplification, in this case, which is minus 10. And we see that at this frequency, one kilohertz is exactly one on top of the other. We increase that, say, to 10 kilohertz. I'm going to decrease this by a factor of one. So we have the same number of cycles. Boom. Perfect. In this case, a real operation amplifier still behaves ideally. And by the way, this is the job of a designer to choose an op operation amplifier for a particular application such that it behaves as an ideal amplifier within that range of operation. Let's increase that to 100. And let's reduce this by 1. OK. Let me zoom in a little bit. We can see that there is a little bit of distortion there. The output, it starts to become more triangular. We go to, let's do 150. Now you see an attenuation now. That attenuation is due to the slew rate. Okay, if you, if you remember when we did the, the um, AC analysis, actually let's just do it here for a second. If we do an AC analysis, AC in decibels, thousand points, one to a uh, ten meg. You can see that at one hundred kilohertz or one fifty, we should be fine. Okay, there should not be attenuation. But we see when we do a transient analysis, 
transients. That not only we are starting to lose gain, but it's starting to become very triangular. If we are at 200, let's do this 200. Look at that. So we are losing gain. And this is the operational amplifier is not able to keep up. If you recall, I and mean, you click here, the data sheet. It has a slow rate. The maximum change that the output is able to do, the rate of change, is 7 volts per microsecond. So it's not able to do more than that, right? And so what you see here is that if you count the microsecond from here to here, the maximum is able to, the rate of change, the maximum rate of change is 7 volts. Okay? So as we continue to increase this at 300, you have an attenuation and you have nonlinear distortion. The output is no longer sinusoidal. Now I'm going to use this opportunity to actually show you also how to do an FFT. If you right click, you go to view, you can do an FFT. You need to do an FFT of the input and of the output. Actually, let me do the input first. I'm going to use a Blackman window. In another video tutorial, I'll show you these window functions and, and um, what are they good for. So this is the FFT. I'm going to do it in linear scale with auto. And this is the input and what we see as we expected, we should see a peak at 300 kilohertz, and it's a pure sinusoid. Right? And so there you got a peak exactly at 300 kilohertz, and it's a pure sinusoid. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the output. If we didn't have nonlinear distortion, it would be also a pure sinusoid at 300k. But if we have nonlinear distortion, then we get harmonics. So let's apply FFT here at the output, the Blackman window. And what you see is exactly that. You see not only the 300 kilohertz, but you're starting to see harmonics. Okay? And that's due to the nonlinear distortion. Thank you.